different. This one, we have a quadratic. So let's try this one. Um, we can, we have radicals on both sides also. So it's a little bit trickier. What we want to do is we can't isolate each radical because this is going to have a coefficient, but that's okay because what we're going to do is we're just going to square both sides. So we want to square the entire right side and then you're going to end up with x squared plus 8 is equal to, and be very careful, this is going to be 4 times 2x minus 1 and then you'll get x squared plus 8 is equal to 8x minus 4. Now let's collect all our like terms. So we get x squared minus 8x plus 12 is equal to 0. So x, let's factor this trinomial. And we get x minus 6, x minus 2. And so our two solutions are 6 and 2. Now we need to check these and make sure they work. So let's see. Let's plug in that 6 first. So 6 squared plus 8. That's 36 plus 8, which is, uh, what's that? 36 plus 8 is 44. So we're looking at the square root of 44, which is 2 root 11. And then let's plug a 6 in here, and we get uh, 12 minus 1, which is 11. So we also have a 2 root 11. Okay, so it looks like 6 is going to check for us. It works. Now let's go back, clean this up, and now let's plug in or two. Okay, let's plug in two this time. Okay, so we're going to plug in two squared is four. So we're going to take the square root of 12, which we know is two root three. And we'll plug in a two here. Two times two is four minus one is three. So we also have a 2 root 3, so these two check out and they are equal. So this one actually has two solutions. And if you want to think, we're going to do this a little bit tomorrow, but if you want to put those in your graphing calculator, you can actually see that those two radical equations intersect each other twice. And you can find the intersection point, so you might want to go back and play around with that. Okay, now, what happens if we have a fourth degree? Okay, so we isolate the radical to, as we do the other ones. So the radical is isolated, but this time we're going to raise it to the nth power, which this time the nth power is the fourth power. So let's raise both sides to the fourth. That leaves us with x minus 1 is equal to 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So x is equal to 17. So let's check it by plugging it back in. And the fourth root of 17 minus 1 is the fourth root of 16. And the fourth root of 16 is indeed 2. So that 17 checks out as a good answer. Now let's look at one with a fifth root. And this one actually has radicals on both sides. So we've got a fifth root. So we're going to raise both sides to the fifth power. Okay, notice I'm showing that step. So you want to show that step. So you get x minus 1 is equal to 3x minus 8. Collect your like terms. So 7 is equal to 2x. So x is equal to 7 halves. Okay, and then we can plug that in. 7 halves minus 1, which is 2 over 2. That equals 5 halves. So we're taking the fifth root of 5 halves. And let's see what the other side is. Let's plug into this side. Plug in 7 halves. So 3 times 7 halves minus 8. That's 21 halves. 
So that's minus 16 halves, which leaves us with 5 halves. And that's all under a fifth root. And notice these two are equal. Whoops. My pen got a little out of control there. Uh, they're equal, therefore that is a good solution. So 7 halves is a solution. Okay. Okay.